Today I'm with Bobby. Bobby, how old are you? 22. You're telling me your birthday is the 14th of December. My birthday is the 15th of December. We're both Sagittarius. Awesome. Small world. Small world, brother, yep. Um, how long have you been out here in the streets of Phoenix? I've been on the streets for six months. Uh, the day after New Year's, January 2nd. What happened back then to cause you to come out here to the streets? I was in a boat with my mother going to visit in um, another location and I um, just spiraled, uh, came back to visit my family that uh, were no longer here. I wasn't uh, aware that they weren't uh, in that same boat with me still. So I came back to really nothing and all of my stuff was ransacked. I came to the streets with nothing and six months later I just got my bag stolen last night for like the 12th time so it's really something that I've just not been able to find my way out of but I'm searching des desperately and actively to get out and keep others out of something we don't deserve you know to be held in or kept in you know that, that boat turned into a box, and that box is just a little speck of um, huge cluster of a mess. How long have you been smoking blues? Uh, since the first day I was on the streets. So that first day I was on the other side of the door, um, I haven't been able to stop. And I'm aware that I can and I want to, and I'm just waiting for that help that it shows me that there's more to life than just that because that's really taken over my per point of view and perspective on uh, just how much there is and just how little things are, you know? How quickly did it take for you to become addicted? Like after how many pills or how many days? Just two. Two pills? You knew the you second, were addicted? The second one. After, after the first one, when I did it again, I knew that I'd want another. And then that another one turned into more, and then more turned into a lot. And, uh, yeah, it was just the one day, first day, because I got one, and then I got another a couple hours later. A couple hours later after that, the next day I had many of them. And I was giving them to people. I was finding people to do them with, and I hate that I've gotten people addicted to them and opened up a world of nightmares, you know, for people that don't know how to stop and don't realize just what they're getting themselves into. Six months ago, did you know what you were getting yourself into? Not at all. You were naive or you uh, just didn't know? I didn't even know about what they were. I didn't know the name of them, what people called them, and someone asked me if I wanted to smoke, you know? I didn't know, and then that addiction turned into something that I um, wanted to try again. I wanted to try again and didn't realize exactly what was in them, what was, you know, handcrafted, like finally to destroy your mind and your life. It's awful. They're designed to cause addiction fast, the high doesn't last a long time, so that you have to consume pill after pill. It destroys your mind, destroys everything, right? Yeah. It's designed that way. And now that you know the dangers and what it's doing to you, what, what steps do you need to put in place to get out of this hole that you're in? Remember how I take care of myself and just how life is supposed to be lived. It's not how you go to sleep and wake up every day or, you know, you forget to eat, you forget to move and stretch, you forget to breathe, you forget to walk around and talk to people. The only conversations people have out here are, you got booze. They don't walk up and say, hi, how are you anymore? That's the problem. People stop caring. People lose a sense of humanity. Exactly. Yeah. They stop loving and caring and, and, and 
worrying about people and it's all about that that little blue devil that, that pill right that's what I've heard, I've heard that a lot yeah it's... when you were younger Bobby what did you want to become as an adult um, I wanted to work in the space field I wanted to work um, in you know like NASA yeah those are my dreams of going out into space wow that's awesome. I, I said that as a kid you know I wanted to learn a lot and know about everything without even knowing like what that was, you know? You were just curious at a young age? Yeah. And now I, all I think about every day is, is how to stop this thing that stops me from doing that. Do you think you will? I hope so. I still do. You know, I have dreams still even though I'm on drugs. I want to see those dreams through and not um, be able to not dream again, you know? So what stops me is just disbelief and being hopeless almost every second of the day for six months now. So I don't want it to be any longer. Some people it's been 15 years, 20 years, every day, on the same day on a loop. I can't imagine that, you know? I wouldn't want anyone to go through that. Six months turns into six years in six seconds. That's what people have told me. They lose track of time. Mm -hmm. Last month, I interviewed a young man. I said, hey, what year is it? He said, 2016. He's lost track of time. That pill is destroying people's brains, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's important, Bobby, that you get off of this and seek help immediately so that once you defeat this addiction, you're able to function afterwards. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. That's important. I want to, yeah. I've tried, I tried to go to uh, some specific locations that are like a detox and rehab, but some of them really are uh, hell holes that you get thrown into that they don't help you. They just are sitting there watching you like a lab rat. I went to one and I like, was just waiting seven hours to get into a, a bed and they put me in a couch with a, a cup of water and a piece of bread and there's someone screaming behind me and in that seven hours I was waiting I left in the first 20 minutes that I was trying to get help and I couldn't I that night I was on the street again you know I was hoping I could like stay there and the next day and then the next day you know just get clean and I couldn't and it just it happened again you know I just there needs to be more that people are offering as far as help and like you know just Assure, assuring you that there is care underneath that help, you know, because I could just see people behind a window looking at me saying, uh, like, just things that I could tell were lies. What's the youngest person you've seen out here in the streets? Um, probably on the, in the first month. A half I was on a, in another location and there was this 15 year old boy um, yeah he yeah he was trying yeah he was trying a lot and people were people were helping him find it and taking him there and I uh, I wasn't any part of that I just I knew that there was this kid out here and I there's nothing I could do to stop it yeah. how do you feel when you see such youth, such such a young person out here just going through your struggles. At least you're a little bit older, but when you're at when you're that age, the youngest I've seen is 13. Yeah. I've heard of 14 year olds. I've heard of 15 year olds, 16 year olds. At that age, what do you do? That being homeless has no age. Being homeless has no age. Uh, addiction has no uh, gender, age, anyone specific that. It, it grabs a hold of and drags them down, pulls them away farther from themselves, and um, you know now people like people like that they don't care. They all of a sudden see you as them or just like that, and um, there's no there's no chance to save yourself from. And um, I just hope that others uh, find that way out. Or at least if it's from, from me, from my, I'm talking to someone. And, um, I, yeah. So, uh, 
Bobby, I'm gonna say thank you very much for talking to me. I really appreciate you. You stay safe. It's dangerous out here. Um, uh, and we'll talk soon, okay? Okay.